Heck yeah, brother. Dang, you playing some Galaga? <laughs> <I'm> all right. <laughs> So that sound you heard was not the crop duster that we passed on the way in. That was the sound of us taking off this protective plastic sheeting on this PVC trim we're gonna use to repair this rotten fascia on this beautiful southern getaway. So we got our fascia here, and we had this custom flashing made at a local sheet metal shop, and we actually built a prototype for you. So let's go up on the roof, and we're gonna show you how we're gonna do this. Hey, we're up here on the roof. So our first step is to apply this white flashing. And we have a hem right here. That's called a hem. And that's so we don't have a sharp edge right there. And we're gonna attach that right here. We're gonna nail it to the subfascia with just some roofing nails. And the reason for this is when we did the demo, we just found like ropes of caulk in this joint because it's not straight. And this piece, We'll straighten out that joint and and we won't have to caulk anything. I mean look how nice can you get over here? See how nice that looks? Yep. And uh they probably use so many so many tubes of caulk and for the same price they probably could have just had some flashing yep. customized. And that caulk is gonna mildew. Yep. Like this did look how black it is or dark it is. Yeah. Then what? So this roof is not level. We already put our laser on it and it is three inches higher on that end than this end. So I can't use my laser to establish where to put this. Um, uh, I just don't have that type of laser. So we're actually gonna run a string from this corner, 70 feet down to the opposite corner and the string will be held off the building. And the string is gonna be at the level of the intersection of the flashing and the base. And this is gonna be higher. But that's the mock-up of our soffit. And then we're gonna scribe this and cut this flashing to account for the waviness of the roof. It'll be a custom fit. Yep, it will. That's basically our system. And you'll kind of get an idea, a better idea of um, how it works as we install it. So we got the flashing up here. This is aluminum. All the flashing we had made is aluminum. I'm just gonna put one in the center to hold it. Nice. All right, that's the first piece. So I had a local sheet metal shop make this for me. I know a shop, but if you don't, don't be afraid to find a shop where you live um, and ask them to help you with your project. I found that most sheet metal shops are more than happy to help you. As long as you go in there with a drawing and you don't expect them to design it for you, they'll make whatever you need. And you gotta remember that this all has plastic co a coating on it too. So we get to pull all that off. <laughs> Let's pull all this protective film off of all these pieces and get these nailed up. Not bad. Eight foot ten. Eight ten. Pull. There you go. I'm pulling with my right hand to make it tight. Sure. And you just take up the slack. A little bit of a sag. I'm gonna pull. Okay. Pull. I got this in my left hand. I'm pulling the slack out. I'll show you guys why in a minute. All right. You need some? No. I think uh, I think we're good. Okay. 
Let's see, is it gonna stay? Yep. And I'm gonna try to, let me have a little slack. I'm gonna try to tie a knot in it. Okay. Okay, so we got our string up here. The purpose of the string is to give us a perfectly straight edge to follow with our new fascia because we don't have a straight edge. The roof is wavy and the soffit is wavy. So we simply screwed a block to each end of the, the uh, gable end here. We've got a nice tight string. We're ready to go. So let's hop downstairs. We'll attach our aluminum flashing to our PVC fascia. And I think we're ready to put it up. Yeah, no problem. We could probably get it done by the end of the day. Absolutely. Let's hop down there and do that. Easy, right? Easy. 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 All right, let's go see what dad's up to. Hey, what are you doing? Sorry, sorry dude, I, I dozed off. I, I had a terrible dream. What happened? Well, I, I dreamed that that new blade we bought for the saw, yeah. the chop saw, was sending sparks like the 4th of July. And oh man. I dreamed that I had to cut like 20 feet of this really hard metal with these little hand snips and our drill bits were snapping in half all over the place. Uh, I don't that, know sounds what, that sounds horrible. I don't know what that was all about. Hmm. Well, I'm ready to get to work. What you got? What, what are those? What's all this? Well, that's aluminum flashing. What the heck? What's all it? Oh, you know what? Uh... It wasn't a dream. <laughs> hey gang, so we're having a little fun with you, but this is kind of how this project turned into the other day. So we ordered aluminum flashing on my drawing. I specified aluminum. I talked to the shop foreman about aluminum flashing and I felt like I paid for aluminum flashing. So the other day when we were working on this and our saw was making sparks cutting this, I realized that it wasn't aluminum. I've, I've used my woodworking tools to cut aluminum forever. Table saws, chop saws, drill bits, a router, it never had sparks. So when it sent out sparks, I got my magnet, and sure enough, they made it out of steel. It was also super heavy. It was discoloring. All the signs were there. Yeah, when we cut it, it was discolored because yeah. of the heat. And it's, it's, it's all colored on both sides, so I can tell looking at bare galvanized sheet metal or aluminum, if it's aluminum or steel. But since this is coated, I couldn't tell. And in fact, the first day we were working up here and I handed Jordan a bundle of that metal, I said, man, this stuff is heavy. You did say that. And my little voice was saying, trying to tell me something was wrong. Yeah. Anyway, we adapted. We're gonna use what we got. It's not worth having it remade. We're just gonna work with the steel. So let's go over here and we'll show you our setup. Can you zoom up there, Jordan, and show them the, the first piece we put up last week? Yep. Or when was that, Saturday? Yeah. It came out great. So the bottom of it is perfectly straight. The top of it is straight. And what you're seeing that's not straight is the roof. So we're going to make up three more and get those up there. Let's show you the process. So this is our material. It's exact. It's solid PVC. Very flimsy this way, pretty rigid that way. Um, it's got a textured side and a smooth side. We're using the smooth side. So what we do on the ground is take a piece of our flashing. Now I'm calling this a drip edge extension. Not something we made up, it's a thing. And we just had this custom made for this job. So all we're doing is we're taking this flashing, we're using a punch with a hammer. Yeah, we're just punching through here. And just punching, it's super easy because it's thin. And then we're screwing the flashing to the PVC. Yep. The PVC accepts this screw wonderfully. And then we're gonna bring this piece on the roof and scribe this flashing to the shape of the roof. We'll show you that up there. Right. But uh, I think we should get cracking. Yeah, the, the other little issue with this, not issue, but 
this, this has a protective film on it, just like we opened the video with me pulling the protective film off of here. This clad sheet metal also has a protective film and it's just a little bit of a bear to get off. So let's do that and we'll see you on the roof. All right. Hey gang, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting a mark every two feet. Now we notice there's a lot of marks on this fascia board from, I guess when they built it. So I'm circling the mark that I make. Because what Jordan's gonna do, he's gonna measure from the string up to here. He's gonna call that out to me. I'm gonna transfer that measurement to our flashing. And then we're gonna cut the flashing to match this. It'll make sense when right. you see what we're doing. So let's keep measuring this. We got all our marks laid out. I'm gonna go down and Jordan's gonna call out the measurements to me. But first we noticed that our string stretched overnight. So we're gonna tighten it up real quick. So Jordan called out all the numbers to me. I marked them on here every two feet. So now all I'm gonna do is use a piece of scrap and connect the dots. And that's our cut line. And this is what you were cutting yesterday by hand. Yes. I'm gonna try my grinder with a cutoff wheel. So let's see if that does it. That looks awesome. Better than doing it by hand, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> and we don't have that jagged edge from the snips. Yeah, the snips created kind of like a uh, really rigid, wavy surface almost. Yeah, you saw the, the pieces when yeah. I came out of my dream. They're, they're really jagged, and we fought that trying to put that one up. Right, because so if it's not straight, it's hitting the drip edge when you're trying to tuck it back, and it's also hitting the, uh, the wood. Yep. So it was really tough. So let's get that up there. Cool. All righty, gang. So we just got our uh, fascia board up and it looks really good. We put three of these white screws in, one on each end and one in the middle, just to kind of help us out. When we get it right in that perfect spot, we can sink the screw and not have to worry about that edge. So we got this one in super easy, actually, because of that grinder, we think. When we cut it by hand on this fascia board, it, it really, this drip edge gap and the wood on the other side, it's a really thin gap and just kind of imagine trying to squeeze a zigzag pattern. That's what the snippers created was like a zigzag pattern in the steel and it was really difficult and we were fighting it. Um, we had to bend the drip edge and all types of stuff. This one was so much easier because of the grinder, definitely the way to go. Drip edge looks flawless. It went in, it took us not even 60 seconds to get this whole thing in. But you guys will notice these black marks on the fascia board and that is due to the grinder actually. The sparks were creating these black marks. It's not a big deal because we can sand it and paint it and no one will ever know. Uh, but we had not anticipated that. So what we're gonna do with our next fascia boards on the rest of the house is we're definitely gonna be covering the PVC with some scrap wood or something else to protect the fascia from these marks in the future. But it'll paint down, it'll look really good in the end. I have so. some of your mom's good towels in the truck. We could use those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now what are we gonna do? The, that one down there? Yeah, so now we're gonna go downstairs and get this piece ready. All right, guys, and right here, you can really see the waviness of the roof, how it dips towards the end and really comes up high right where the camera's at. And then down here, the fascia board, I mean, it's pretty straight. 
like it looks really good and especially from the ground it looks good but right now we have to go get these other boards prepped and get them up right yeah and we even noticed that this soffit has some waviness to it yeah it did have waviness yep, so, so this uh this this gap right here this kind of reveal that we planned on having is not going to be uniform but it's okay because no one's going to be yep you're always looking at this way right no one's going to be seeing that side of the house so yeah let's get this one ready now cool i think it'll be easy now with that straight that straight edge that that grinder's making yep it'll slip right in place it will cool all right guys quick little update we have our third piece assembled down on the ground i'm up here on the roof and i'm measuring every two feet like we've been doing there's a mark there there's a mark there and so what i've been doing is using this scrap piece of our pvc fascia that we have and this is three quarters and what i'm doing is i'm putting it up against the rope or the string line just like that okay and i'm getting the tape measure and i'm measuring from the drip edge down to the bottom of this board right not the top edge but the bottom measuring to the bottom because that's accounting for the three quarters of an inch that has to tuck up and in to the drip edge right so what i measure this distance right here from there to the string and then an extra three quarters but i'm just using this as a, a template essentially so that's our measurements and that's how we're transferring that i don't know if we had mentioned that earlier and that might have been a little confusing um but it's kind of hard with one uh two hands up here so that's what we're doing so now we're going to go downstairs cut the cut the metal cut the steel with the grinder and i was only able to get about 10 feet before the edge stopped me so i was able to measure to about there right but from what we can tell the string line looks pretty even starting at about that 10 foot mark until our board runs out so we've got another six feet down that way that we can't really measure for accurately because we'd have to be hanging off the roof and whatnot. So we're just gonna say that our measurement for the last one is gonna stretch the six feet that we need. We're just gonna go ahead and cut it and we think it'll be fine. So dad's down there ready to cut. So let's go cut this thing, bring it up here and install it and see how she looks. You ready? Yep. Get it. And so before dad starts cutting, we've got um, an extra piece of fascia board and we're using the textured side up because we're using the smooth side. So that's gonna be towards the house against the house no one's ever going to see it so we're protecting our fascia board now so yeah, should come out a lot cleaner yeah, here we go Oh, it's probably hitting that tab. Where at? The tab down there. Oh. Okay, hold on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, put it on the string. That's not bad at all. Nice, dude. Yeah. That was the easiest one. <laughs> Hanging off the roof. Well, that's why the, the day that we didn't film us doing the first one, that's why, because we had to learn how to do it better yep we definitely learned on that one and now that we've got a better system i mean that's how fast it is that's pretty sweet all right why don't you hand me the tape measure and i'll measure this one while i'm right here i think i got to come up a little right here though dad because okay there's a little bit of a lip yeah so i'm gonna adjust that real quick
right, this is the last screw. Sink it. Nice. Good. Yeah, let's hop down the let's hop down to the fascia board and side it. Let's see how we're looking straight wise. Oh, that looks awesome. Hey gang, we are excited. We got the last piece of fascia put up a little while ago down here on the end. You saw us hanging over the edge. It looks great. My plan worked really well, just the way I wanted it to. So that, that piece of fascia down there, on the far end, it has a miter because the fascia on the end of the roof was mitered. So we wanted those to be, be together. This end just had a butt joint. We have some special corners we had made. And we're gonna show you that in the next video. And also, this is 70 feet long and I wasn't comfortable gluing this stuff. So we left these expansion joints and the, our sheet metal company is gonna make me some white cover plates to cover this. And then you'll never see them from the ground. And then we'll also come back and put our screws every 16 inches. We need another row here. We'll fill the holes, paint it, and we'll be done up here. Yeah, and it already looks so good. Yeah, it's, it's such a big difference. If you go back to the very first video, right. we, where we demoed the fascia, you can see what a mess it was. Right. So let's jump down to the ground and see what it looks like from, the, from down there. All right. That's going to be a wrap for this video. Be sure to watch for our next video, and we're going to put the fascia up around the first floor. It's a little different process, a little easier, we hope. We hope you learned something. We hope you enjoyed the video. It was really fun for us. Make sure you go back and watch our previous videos. We've got some really cool ones from making beds to tunneling under concrete. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. Make sure you share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one. See you in the next one.